This is the test setup for the Raspberry Pi based IoT automation system. Here you have the Raspberry Pi. This is a transistor control relay circuit. It's hooked on to a HDMI monitor and a USB charger and USB keyboard as well. So I'll just show you the Python program. It's a very sh simple and short Python program. Here you can see that I'm using the XMPP service. Here using this service you'll be kind of able to control the system from your home network. But if you have your own domain or server you can just replace that domain server address over here so that you'll be able to use the same files and control system from anywhere around the world. Now we'll just try running the program. You can see that the current button press state is on. We'll try changing that using a web UI. Here using this tablet you'll be able to toggle the output string. So you can see now that the string is turned off. Similarly when I press the on button. You'll be able to see that the string becomes on now. So basically on pressing the HTML button, there's a PHP file that stores a string inside a text file and the Raspberry Pi accesses another PHP file which passes the information stored in the text file to Raspberry Pi. So based on that string, whether it's on or off, the Raspberry Pi sets its GPIO pin high or low um, to which the relay is connected so that the appliance connected to the relay will be switched on or off depending on the string. Now I have the Raspberry Pi set up on a switchboard in order to switch the lights on via the web interface. So um, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an HDMI monitor hooked up to it right now. So in order to initiate the program, we can connect to it wirelessly using SSH. So using SSH, I'll be able to uh, control the Raspberry Pi via this terminal on my PC here. So I just enter the command sudo ssh the IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi. So this is a command for ssh control of Raspberry Pi. Now we have to enter the Raspberry Pi's password. After that, it shows that SSH has been connected and we can resume using this terminal just as if it is the terminal of the Raspberry Pi. So you can see now Home Pi. Now I'll show you the system in action. And before that, we have to run the Python program from here. So that's sudo sorry sudo python ras p dot by now the program has started running now I'll take you to the system this is the raspberry pi and the relay hooked up to my switchboard here it's connected to the wiring of one of the switches so that i'll be able to control the light connected to that switch using a web interface so that's the tube light i'm controlling using my raspberry pi so i'll just show you the web interface now so here's the web interface when i turn on the button you can see the light turns on and in order to turn off, I have the same similar off command. So offing it to turn the light off. Show it to you once again. Turn on. Turns the light on. And similarly, turning off the HTML button. We'll turn it off. 
So you have to take care while using the GPIO pins of Raspberry Pi because right now I've used the uh, GPIO pins 5 and 6. 5 being the ground, uh, 5 being the GPIO, sorry, and 6 being the ground. Uh, but you should take care while you're using these GPIOs because um, 5 and 6 are usually used to short the Raspberry Pi in order to get it into the safe mode. So I wouldn't recommend you using GPIO pins 5 and 6. So please edit the program code in raspi.py to change the GPIO to five, from 5 to any other GPIO. So if you have your own domain or web server, you can just copy those programs I have uploaded on DIYhacking.com and use it to control the system from anywhere around the world. But you don't need to worry if you don't have your own domain or server, you can simply use a service called XMPP where you can do the same thing. However, it will be limited to a control range of your home network. So have fun with this tutorial.